Hey folks, it's Tom, your frugal prepper. This is gonna be a video about how I cured or at least brought my diabetes under control. Did I cure my type two diabetes? Well, not really because I'm more likely to become type two diabetic if I go back to eating carbohydrates again, right? But I have got it under good control and I'm no longer considered diabetic when they take my A1C. I used to be 458 pounds I was on 300 plus units of insulin per day. I uh, had high blood pressure, was on five blood pressure medications. My systolics would be the 250 to 280. I had all kinds of ologists and doctors. Um, I was on five metformin, or five metformin at once and then they took me down to four when I went to a different doctor because he said, you're not supposed to take five. And those are 500 milligram tablets. I had an A1C of 14. I had bad knee that needed surgery. They wouldn't do it because I had the diabetic leg ulcers that wouldn't heal. I had a torn rotator cuff on my shoulder from rolling a riding mower over and over downhill. Um, I had, uh, I was going blind from diabetic retinopathy and macular degeneration. I uh, had some gout in my feet. I had arthritis in my feet, arthritis in my legs. Everything hurt all the time. I felt really bad. Five years ago, I started keto, and then I fell off the keto wagon. I went to dirty keto, and then six months ago, I went carnivore. And total, now I have lost 198 pounds from that 458 pound mark. I today I weigh 260 pounds. Now, I'm not a doctor. If you have high sugars, or you're having sugar problems, or you're diabetic, you need to talk to your doctor. This is just my experience. Um, I was on 300 plus units of insulin a day. Uh, when I first started keto, I had a Polish sausage for breakfast. I went to work. I got low blood sugar because <laughs> I still took all my insulin. I had to eat candy and get something to eat in the cafeteria real quick. Um, and then I, the next day I switched to a half of a dose of insulin for my slow acting and I didn't take my fast acting. And I still got low sugar. <laughs> I had to eat some candy and get something to eat some carbs. And then I went uh, to a quarter dose. And then a few days after that, I just quit taking it. My blood sugar did go higher when I quit taking it into the 200s much better than the 400s I had at the time. And I didn't have the blindness yet, so I wasn't as concerned about it. I was on metformin, I stayed on the metformin. I stayed on the four pills a day, then I went to three eventually after a month, then I went to two after another month, and then I went to one, you know. So I, I slowly phased those out. My A1C in three months came down to the eights from a 14 point something, and then Three months after that, it came down and was a 5.9. And my last A1C that I had, it's been a year ago now because my doctor dropped me for being a non-compliant patient. Um, it's a, it was a 5.4, I believe. Um, so I'm no longer diabetic right, by the definition that they would have. But yes, if I eat some birthday cake with some icing, I am sure my sugar is going to go up, right? So I'm still somewhat insulin resistant, but I can fast now. I do exercise and I do walk, I do weights walk. Uh, but that wasn't part of my weight loss. That's just as I've lost this last 60 pounds, I've wanted to exercise more and I find it fun and exciting and it, I enjoy doing it, so I do it. But that was not part of my weight loss or part of my healing. Um, and so I would say you, you number one, need to go to the doctor, make sure that you're still producing insulin, right? Get your C peptide and all that done. Make sure that your pancreas is still producing insulin and you haven't become a type one. I was a type two. Most, most, this is mostly about type twos. It's not for type ones. That's a different disease. Um, but you know, I would say that you have to go slow. You have to understand that you, if you've been on insulin, you've been in this vicious circle towards death, 
right? Uh, my sugar is too high, I'm more diabetic, so I need to take insulin. Then it's like, get, it makes you fatter, makes your sugar higher, makes your diabetes worse, so you need to take more insulin. And it just continues in that circle of taking more and more and more insulin. When I first started taking insulin, I took 10 units, right? And then I'm on over 300 units years later. So you just have to take it slow. You have to be willing to eat. Another thing I'll say is how much fat should you eat? It really doesn't matter, right? I got to 50-50. I don't have a gallbladder. It took me a while to get there. You know, I started out with just a little bit of fat and chicken breast, right? And then I added more and added more and added more. But if your gallbladder is unhealthy or you're missing a gallbladder, it's just going to take a while for all that to get back in a situation to where you can help, you can digest that fat. So if you start having any gastrointestinal issues, adjust the fat. If you're getting constipated, you might need more salt. But that's about all I have to say is just you really need to do a carnivore diet or a keto diet, which is a clean keto. And by clean, I mean you're eating ketogenic whole foods that you make yourself. You're not going out and buying keto breads and keto snacks and keto chips and keto cupcakes and keto brownies. Leave that crap behind and you wanna cook with whole, low carb keto ingredients. I will say I'm doing better on a carnivore or a mostly carnivore. I occasionally have some spaghetti squash. I occasionally have some pickles. I occasionally have some onion. I occasionally have some mushrooms. I occasionally have some olives. But they're very rare and very occasionally. 98% I'm just meat and 98% of that meat is beef. So I want to talk a little bit uh, about my previous video as well. I'll put a link to it up there where I said you can uh, get high sugar when you're diabetic. There was a lot of comments there by people, I, people I, who I don't think understand. Uh, they said that that was conjecture. Well, it sort of is. I mean, it's from my experience and the learning that I've done by reading all the documents and literature that I've read about it. But I was trying to simplify it. But there seems to be this thought that you can't have high sugar if you don't eat carbohydrates. If you're fasting, there's no way you're gonna have high sugar. And that simply isn't true. Uh, there also seems that people say you can't, you, you, you don't, uh, you can't, your liver can't be in, in burning mode when you're, you have insulin. That's not true. Um, so when you fast, uh, your liver starts to make sugar and ketones, right? To run your body to give you energy right and it goes into fat burning mode uh, but you still have to produce insulin so there's a few different pathways by which uh, or more than a few but there's a few main pathways by which your cells can take up glucose uh, your gastrointestinal tract can take them up with a sodium intake method and it passes them on to the red blood cells that can take them up with a, a glute and it takes glute one so it can it can absorb that sugar with glute one and with no insulin um, but all the other cells in your body or nearly all of them require a glute four right glute four is a protein uh, that lives in the cell it's stored in the cell and when it sees an insulin in an insulin receptor, it says, oh, there's sugar to be had, and it sends those proteins to the cell membrane to grab those glucose molecules and convert them and bring them into the cell. Um, and that's the only way they can get glucose. There is no other way by which they can absorb glucose. Glucose is too thick of a molecule, too big of a molecule to absorb directly through the cell membrane. So yes, you do make insulin when you're fasting and your liver is making sugar. Um, so that's important to realize. And if you want more information about all these different proteins and the structures, I've done a lot of reading about it. I'm pretty knowledgeable. I can do a video uh, on my extras channel. I'll put a link to that up there. Um, just leave a comment down below and tell me you'd like that. Um, so when I said you eat multiple times a day, to avoid having the high sugars, 
Number one is why do you want to avoid having high sugars? Well, this video and that video are for people who have been severely diabetic for a long time. I was diabetic, diagnosed as diabetic like 21 years ago, right? With an A1C of 17 and a meter that wouldn't read it because it maxed out at 550, it just said high, right? And it's gotten under control and less control and good, better and worse, right? And insulin's bad for you, injecting insulin, but it's the sugar that causes you to go blind. It's the sugar, a high sugar, that destroys the blood vessels in your kidneys. It's the high sugar that destroys the small capillaries that keeps wounds from healing. It's the sugar that causes a lot of those problems, not just the high insulin, right? So you want to keep your sugar low. In my case, I don't want to go blind or any blinder that I've already become, right? And now I've stopped going blind because my A1C is normal. Um, but I can get macular degeneration, retinopathy, macular edema again and go blinder. So I don't want to have high sugars even for one day. So when you say, oh, you just live with this for high sugars for three or three days and they'll come down, that's true. And if you're in a position where you're willing to, you know, take that risk, fine. I don't want to go blind. So I don't do that. I would rather uh, not fast, eat when I'm hungry, eat the right foods and let my sugar come down over time. My example that I talked about happened months and months ago, right? Where I had some high sugars that got up to the 180s and then it has slowly come down since I haven't fasted and I haven't fasted in since, right? And I still continue to lose weight and get healthier. I don't like fasting. I don't like being hungry. I find it uncomfortable, so I don't fast. Um, so eat multiple times a day, uh, but only eat when you're hungry. Don't don't just eat because you're supposed to eat. Eat if you're hungry. Uh, when you get hungry, that creates stress, right? And that stress also tells the liver to make more energy, which is glucose, which your cells cannot take up because they're still insulin resistant and your liver is in fat burning mode. It can't switch back to fat storage mode to help store that sugar that it just created. Because if it switches to fat storage mode while you're fasting, you're going to die from a lack of energy. The liver knows the difference between glucose that it's making and glucose that you ate. And it knows when you eat it, you have to go into fat storage mode. But it knows when it's making it, it made it and it does not go back into fat storage mode until you eat something. So if you have any questions, leave them down below. If you'd like me to do another video on my extras channel with more detail as to how exactly this process works with the proteins taking up the insulin, that's fine. But I didn't just make that up, right? That's, that's stuff that I've learned and read. And it's also stuff that my old, old doctor it kind of started to explain to me and tell me about and then I got interested and went and started looking so interesting stuff I'll talk to y'all later it's Tom your frugal prepper